All right. So for those of you who watch every day here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech, you'll be aware that I guess you could call it I've done a major upgrade to my main PC, or as I now call it, my main rig. C drive is now an M.2 drive and the BIOS set M.2. D drive contains all my programs. And then I now have the old C drive, just as purely raw file storage, and a Western Digital 1 terabyte enterprise drive for all the audio. But there's one burning question that the holier than thou know it all experts still can't answer. Nevertheless, though, let me give you an update on the finished system. You're watching Old Mate's Backyard Tech. Arvo all, just on up past 12 Wednesday Arvo, lunchtime. So for those of you who work Monday to Friday, undoubtedly you're either on your lunch break or it's coming up very soon. And as we always say here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech for midweek Wednesday, the downhill run into the weekend gets underway at knockoff time the Sarvo. So if your week's been a bit, you know, but as your father, a bit tedious and aggravating, maybe the Savo start planning your weekend's activities. That'll give you something to look forward to, if nothing else. It is time for the final update here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech regarding my, my main PC, or as I now call it, my main rig. Job is done. Everything is now set up. But there's a burning question that the holier-than-thou holier know-it-all experts can't answer. Now, either they can't answer it because, well, they can't answer it, or they can't answer it because they won't answer it. But anyway, let me, uh, let me show you how things are set up and uh, explain some of the changes I've made to the main rig because it was heavily loaded. It's now not. And really, I've only installed what I needed to install, at least from making videos, but also what I need from a pro audio point of view. And here it is. So, let's go down the desktop. I've got what I use. I've got my recycle bin and my A shampoo stuff, various other bits, and then all the audio stuff. And you'll notice there's not a lot of audio on here anymore. Really, all I've got is OBS, DaVinci, obviously Mixbus 32C7, Cubase, Winamp, and VLC. Okay, the, I've really lightened this system up, all right? Now, as far as hard drives and everything is concerned, there's the M.2 drive. There's the SSD. That is my iSCSI hard drive. That is my old C drive, all right, which has got all my raw documents. Um, all these here, these quick, ac these quick accesses, all right, the whole lot gets pointed to this, all right. So effectively, everything that's on here is my old user folder. And all this is redirected to it. Then down here, this is my dedicated audio drive, right? So Mixbus and Cubase go into here. Now, I know what you're gonna say, okay? Old mate, you're still using mechanical storage. It's gonna take forever to do anything. Put it this way. I've already done a test record onto this drive and it recorded fine and it played back fine. Mixbus loaded faster, yes. The VST effect loaded faster, yes. But the quality of the recording didn't change. You see, this is why I say I don't listen to know-it-all experts with holier-than-thou attitudes because they're not always right even though they would like people to believe they are. So I have really lightened this up. That's the backup hard drive there. That's got an, a full backup image of my original C drive and a backup of the M.2 drive. And believe it or not, the backup of the M.2 drive is only 20 gig. And that's because I use ESUS. So the main rig's done. And um, as I said, I've got the BIOS set M.2 um it's a lot better having the bios set m.2 
than it is to have the BIOS set auto because at least if you tell the BIOS and particularly if you're running around with a Z97 series a Zeus motherboard if you tell the BIOS that M.2 and set it to M.2 you're not waiting for the BIOS to try and auto configure the drive it's preset the parameters are done for it so you can just go for broke okay now I want to talk about this burning question because I still can't get an answer. All right, I want to delve deeper into this question because it appears as though I still can't get an answer. Okay. Now, we all know old mate used to cop a lot of flack because I ran mechanical storage. And if you listen to the holier than now know-it-all experts and people here on YouTube, if you go to solid state, you have a vastly improved PC, but in actual fact, that's only 50% of the equation. Now, in old mate's case, my system is biased towards pro audio. So the entire system is set up for recording and playback of audio. Secondary is video. After all, I don't play any games. Now, a lot of people said that I would have a vastly superior PC. And yes, my PC now runs at the speed of a XT. All right, but my question is, and I'm surprised people cannot answer this. Now, either they can't answer it because they can't answer it, they can't answer it because they won't answer it, or they can't answer it because they know what they were spinning was total bull SH1T. When you are told by holier than now network expert, uh, know-it-all experts, you'll have a vastly superior PC and so you do the solid state upgrade only to be left half happy, what does that indicate? Well, it effectively indicates that, especially from an audio point of view, it makes no difference what your storage device is. The adage of GIGO becomes very much apparent. Now, we all know what GIGO is. I learned about it in, I was seven years old. 1987 on an Apple IIe, Platinum. So is there a reason now that I have gone to M.2 for Windows and SSD for programs that I am left half happy? Well, of course there is, because I fell into the trap of believing the holier-than-thou know-it-all experts. Now, if I wanted to, I could get seven videos out in a day. What people need to realize is, it's not necessarily the speed of your transcode that holds you up. It's how quickly you can edit a video together. Now, having an SSD and an M.2 drive with DaVinci makes no difference to the speed of the edit. I can only edit as fast as I can edit. When you're recording audio, you're governed by 30 frames a second standard pro audio frame rate for music for video it's different we know that we've got everything from 25 all the way up to 120 if you want or higher as you guys know i now run 60 because i modded my hardware to cope for 60 and yes i've still got a little bit of sync i'm about three or four milliseconds out on the sync and that's you know time to adjust basically but the burning question remains that the holier-than-thou network, the holier-than-thou know-it-all experts either can't answer, won't answer, or now that I've gone to M.2, only needed proof, which is generally what happens. So let me tell you exactly what I've discovered so far. The PC is faster, yes, but it's no better. It's overall no better. It's faster, but no better. The audio quality is exactly the same. The VSTs, now whether you're talking my VSTIs, which this thing communicates with, mind you, on that topic, this isn't working any better either. It's response time and everything is exactly the same in Cubase. So that didn't change. That was also a falsehood, right? Because you've got to remember, this is only USB 2. This is not a USB 3 MIDI controller. It's a USB 2 MIDI controller. 
so that the holy are now know-it-all experts forgot about that so the vst instruments load faster but they know they don't sound any better the effects in mix bus load faster but they don't sound any better and the reason is is that an audio signal shock horror to a few people is not intelligent enough to know whether or not it's going to the old mag tape dtrs or digital recording be that hdd or sdd after all once it goes through an adda it turns in from an analog sine wave to a pcm wave there is no intelligence in an audio signal to know what it's being recorded to the holier than thou know it all experts don't seem to understand that right the 1178 my beautiful universal limiting amp it loads faster yes but it doesn't process the audio any faster because it's in real time there's no quality drop off by me recording to my western digital hard drive and recording to the ssd so doing the upgrade that i have done and proven that i can do i only achieved 50 percent of what i was told would happen a vastly superior system no 50 percent of that vastly superior is true 100 percent of that 50 percent is true the pc runs a lot better the rig is running much faster and i knew it would i said that on monday but I should not have believed that the quality of my audio would skyrocket. Now, let's look at this from a realistic point of view. Okay, let's be real about this. If you work in a production house or a heavy graphics design company or an AutoCAD company or a photographic production firm, going to m.2 and ssd with good with a good quality graphics card yes you will get things done faster on both levels and yes you have more room to improve the quality of what you're producing because you've got vast you've got better performance but in saying that if you put in an hd photo and tell it to transcode that photo into something else it's not automatically going to go, well, I'm now on solid state media, so you've put me in at 1920 by 1080, I'm going to come out at 8K. It's not that intelligent. Now, in the case of pro audio or audio in general, if I record in 44.116 bit, the audio signal doesn't go, well, I'm now going onto an SSD or an M.2 drive, so I'm now going to go from 44.116 bit to 48k 24 bit because I'm now on solid media instead of being recorded to magnetic media and magnetic media either being digital as in hard drives or DTRS or to traditional mag tape you know whether you're talking half inch one inch two inch you know I can't record any better in than what I already am it's like with the old analog mag tape days with multi-track 2 inch if you recorded at 15 ips and play back at 15 ips the recording is as good as the ips speed same if you went from 30 ips and played back at 30 ips the quality is going to be as good coming back off the multi-track at 30 ips because you recorded at 30 ips but the audio signal doesn't care what it's getting recorded to it doesn't have intelligence so the question for the holier than now know-it-all experts out there who claimed I would have a vastly superior system, why do I not have a vastly superior system? Why have I not seen a massive improvement in the audio? Why has Harrison Mixbus 32C all of a sudden said, right, well, I'm just going to upscale everything now? See, they can't answer that. And the reason they can't is because... All you have to do is prove it. Now that Intel 128 gig M.2 drive 
has made Windows very much faster. But I've only got 32 gig of DDR3 and it is a fourth gen Core i7-4770. So yes, the comparison is the IBM XT is faster. But what I didn't get was the vast superiorness that people said I would get. So I've now done the upgrade. I'm obviously not going to go back to, you know, blowing everything away and starting again. That's just a waste of time. But it shows you why I refuse to accept holier than thou know-it-all experts because they don't know everything. I know there's a multitude of different types of uh, recording techniques and microphone techniques. I don't know them all. I don't profess to know everything about every microphone, just like I don't know everything about every single mixing console out there. I know that SSL, Neve and Harrison have a sound to them that is very nice. Harrison has a better sound to it than an SSL or Neve because I can't split SSL and Neve. It's Harrison followed by SSL Neve, then Mackie. I'm down the bottom of the pile is Test Camp with Behringer. But, you know, I, I am annoyed because I believed these holier than thou know it all experts that I would have a vastly superior, and I don't. I have a better performing system, but that's all I have. Now, as far as an application point of view, um, I have Outlook and Word. As you saw, I have OBS. DaVinci, Mixbus, Cubase, Winamp, and VLC from the audio. OBS and DaVinci for AV, and then just Cubase, Mixbus, Winamp, and VLC for the audio. That's it. The system is lightened up something severe. There's a lot of stuff that I don't have anymore because I wasn't using it, and it was just taking up system resources, basically. Having gone to M.2 and lightening it up, and to give you guys an idea of how much I've lightened it up, I've only used 50% of 110 gig, all right? But all the programs, if you add the programs I've installed, I would have used more than 50% of the hard drive. Well, I've only used 50% and I clean it every day. I trash the, because when you, when you do recordings and all this, you leave temporary crap all over the place. And so, the end of every day, I'll run a registry cleaner and an app cleaner just to clean up the temporary crap. So, to the holier than thou network, holier than thou know it all experts, if you can't answer the burning question, then what right have you got to go around kowtowing about the fact that you know everything? What's the bet some of them would walk into some of the big recording studio companies and say, sack everyone because I'm the only one that knows how to do a recording. I reckon that'd be their attitude. Like I look at, like we spoke about last week or so, you know, Steve Albini, Bruce Swedian, you know, they are the pinnacle of analog recording. You know, there's nothing they can't answer. There's a lot I can't. When I stopped recording, I'd only been recording for I don't know, six, seven years, five, six years, sorry. So I'd only been recording to DTRS and MagTape for about six years. There's piles of stuff that I don't know. And I admit that. But I don't go around telling people, you know, if you're running Pro Tools, you're not running a proper DAW. I accept Pro Tools as the industry standard. I just prefer Mixbus. But you can't go around saying to people that if you convert to solid state, your entire PC goes through the roof because it doesn't. Your performance does. 100% of that is true. Okay. I knew it would be. I just didn't have the money and I still don't have a big enough M.2 drive. Ideally, you need a one tera and then a two or four tera SSD. I don't have that. But what I do have is that Windows is on its own dedicated hard drive. All the programs are on a dedicated hard drive. And that has done wonders for performance. Yes, 
and I knew it would. But for the holier-than-thou know-it-all experts, where's the rest of your claim? Where's the improvement with Mixbus? Where's the improvement with Cubase? And where's the improvement with the VSTI sounds? Like, my hearing's still good. I'm 45 to 18K. I don't hear any difference. So going to M.2 has done a wonders for performance. Where's the rest of your claim, though? Where's the vastly superior overall improvement in the main rig when this hasn't changed? And neither's the UCA. The only way I would improve, at least if not the THD, but possibly the S to N ratio, would be to go and get an RME system or a Korg or a Roland ADDAC. Now that would improve. Probably get it with Thunderbolt for the multi-channel support. As we know, Thunderbolt can do multi-channel audio. All right. But it, or, or even get one of those um, Ethernet units, all right? Now, most of us are very familiar with them. Basically, what they are is um, AOE, audio over Ethernet. Effectively, it's a closed-loop network. And um, it's multi-channel audio. So you get your ADDAC, uh, put another network card in, and, and, and away you go. Right, it's on a close. It, it doesn't work as a network, but it uses Cat5. I think it's almost NDI, maybe. But anyway, that I could probably do. And that would drop the S, well, raise the S to N and drop the THD. Okay. A UCA is not really supposed to be running through a fed ink and mixing console, uh, industry standard mixing console. I should have like an RME or a Universal Audio or a Korg or a Roland ADDAC. But they're thousands of dollars. So I use what I've got. So the holier than thou know it all experts either can't answer the question of where is the vastly superior improvement that you said I'd get or won't answer it because now that I am on M.2 and SSD, they have no clue as to how to improve the audio. I know how to improve it. I really know how to improve it go out and find very cheap for like a $20 note a Harrison 32C a RME 16 channel ADDAC on Thunderbolt 3 or, or Cat 5 whatever you want to call it and that would drop the THD and shoot the signal to noise ratio through the roof There'd be one way I could do it. I don't exactly know where I'd put a Harrison 32C. RME 16 channel I could probably put somewhere. Probably under the console. There we go. So main rig done. All finished. And I look, don't get me wrong. I'm happy about it being faster. I'm just annoyed that I believed the holy other than now know-it-all experts that everything would improve. Question for them, does an audio signal know what it's being recorded to, especially if it's being dithered type A at 24 bit? And if it is under PCM, then how come its quality doesn't change between a really nice Ampex two inch tape running through a Studer A820 versus being recorded to a Elesis ADAT HD24 SSD. They should be able to answer that because we know they're holier than our know-it-all experts who tout their knowledge as being everyone should look at them. I would just like to know why they told me I'd have a vastly superior system and everything would be better when the audio didn't change. Anyway, there we go. 
All right, guys, that is it for Midweek Wednesday here at Old Mates Backyard Tech. I'll catch you around the channel for Thursdays tomorrow. Have a good one. This has been an Old Mates Backyard Tech presentation.